now at this point i was completely alone exhausted tired didn't know what to do i knew the route i knew everything what it was but i wanted water that was prior thing the sun was killing behind my friend was not there with me the two of them went ahead i removed my backpack kept it there done i was like if someone comes to my rescue they rescue me i'm not moving from here oh i want water that's how the situation was um i felt that i was hallucinating i felt that i was from unboxing stories this is himalayan diaries i'm your host ojas in today's episode we continue our chat with teerth he shares an extraordinary story from his expedition to kang yatse to this next segment is my favorite segment and but you might find it difficult to choose the trek you have to choose okay your favorite trek and you have to give a trek walk through of that trek okay oof sounds very difficult now <laughs> i'll try my best trek leaders don't go there uh, i wa- i went there as a backpacker and uh, this is one of the stories that i have kept hidden within myself and the people who were there with me because i don't know whether i was comfortable of bringing this story out um about myself um it was the expedition to kang yatse 2 uh this was one of the things where i was not a trek leader uh, i was just a backpacker for myself i was doing this for myself um and uh, something that i have after that i think there's a bit i'm a bit scared uh there's a this scary feeling about the whole trek how it went uh, and everything so let me take you through i hope no one to kangatsi to uh, because it's one of the places in ladakh uh, and uh, so the kangatsi to happened 3 uh, months back i think it was 2023 last year i hope it was last year or 2022 i'm not sure about the year uh, it was somewhere around june july where the season of the ladakh starts and uh, unfortunately the stok kangri was still off limits uh, my plan was to do a 6000 meters trek uh, for myself to see uh, how well fit i am what happened uh, before that i met with a small injury of ligament uh the ankle ligament and it was twisted it didn't break down but it stretched a lot and i was on bed rest for 6 months so i was struggling through that and for 6 months i didn't do much hikes i didn't go for my runs and suddenly one of my friend he calls me up he's like uh, i'm planning to go for kang yatse and in ladakh and ladakh has been one of the places which i always wanted to go uh, now the thing was i wanted to do stok kangri but then the stok kangri was off limits so he was like you want to try kang yatse too and i was like why not uh, and i was like who all are planning to go because i didn't wanted to take a guide i wanted to do it by myself the whole trek carrying everything with me and then going forward with it so he said it's just us and i'm like sounds like a plan um, because we both have trekked a lot of time together and the connection that we have when we are on a trek we know where to give each other space we don't talk much it's not like we are clingy on each other no why are you not talking what happened to you or something like that we understand each other's spaces we know how to take forward on a trek and we had a good bonding so we decided to go for it uh, i started training two months before our kang yatse plan <clears throat> we wrote down all the possibilities what all problems we can face what all opportunities we will face now kang yatse 2 is basically a 10 to 12 day expedition where which goes through the markha valley of ladakh and you reach to the base camp of kang yatse 1 and 2 it's a common base camp from there you would take an acclimatization walk come back go to the crampons and then your snow section starts which makes you reach on the top that's how the whole plan was and uh, we also decided that we'll do a 10 day proper trek with a backpacking style take everything with us rent some stuff buy some stuff take our food products cook it for ourselves we are planning to take one tent only so that we don't take much weights 
and that is how our plan was to take it forward and the two months were really good uh, there was this one small issue that we were facing we thought that once we reach ladakh we'll sort it out that was permission of getting kang yatse 2 so you need approval of local authority so we thought we will get it once we reach ladakh but as soon as we reach ladakh we had a two days acclimatize rest there and uh, we went through all this office of mountaineering institutes to get the say the permits to go inside the maka valley and kangya situ so they told us that um, to go inside you need a guide and without a guide you wouldn't get a permit now here uh literally our heart broke down because we didn't wanted to spend that much of money because a guide for a day will charge you nearly 3000 to 5000 for a day and for 10 to 12 days you have to pay around 30k to a guy we have done our courses we know exactly how to take it forward we were two people there was one more person who was planning to join us so we are three people and we know exactly how to take it forward but they didn't allow us so finally we were like what to do and there was this good friend of mine who was around ladakh and he has good contacts so we contacted him we asked him about how to take it forward and he was like i can help you with that i won't take you the guide money or anything i'm going to come with you as a guide uh, but we have to do it in 6 days and we were like why so because he is like uh, you are just going to get permits of 6 days we'll tell them that we are doing just the maka valley kangas to and going and coming back in 6 days they will give me the permission and i was like okay sounds good but then me and sopnil were uh, not that great for doing it for 6 days because it's a big trek you got a lot of kilometers to walk it's a barren land ladakh again barren but cold lands no much forest or trees around you so you are walking in the sun and you are going through it and we had 30 kilos of our backpacks with us we planned our ration now where we got ration for two people now there were four people so we had to get extra ration so everything was split into the people's bag and i had personally 28 kgs my friend had 28 kgs the guide had around 24 26 kgs the other guy had around that much so we were carrying so much of weight and according to the 6 day plan sorry according to the 10 day plan that we had we had to do 10 kilometers a day or sometimes 8 kilometers now according to a new schedule of 6 days of doing the entire kangya se to we had to do at least 20 to 25 kilometers a day now that was pushing too much with the weights mm. uh, being as a trek leader before i was like okay i was carrying a oxygen cylinder i was carrying everything that was around 20 kg i will be able to do it everyone was sure sopnil was sure i was sure let's just complete it in more 6 days this is going to be a biggest achievement in our lives and i was like let's go let's do this and we were very excited we all were like we know exactly what we are doing we are fit we are energetic everyone is going to do it we started walking the first day we took a car you take a car from ladakh you reach to a certain point from there you start walking and uh, you reach to a particular campsite area so we did where we saw everyone else taking the halt how we made an itinerary for 10 12 days it really felt like uh, we should just rest and take it slow now we are entering the marka valley we should just take it slow but we had 6 days permit <clears throat> now coming to the marka valley one of the most gorgeous barren lands i've ever witnessed the mountains are there it is cold initially uh, if i have to tell you about my and sopnil's plan it was doing two peaks in that 12 days the one was kangyatse too and second was one of the peaks i just don't want to mention the name there were two plans to submit it uh in the span of 3 days and then get down so it will be like doing 2000 to 6000 meters peak uh in the span of 3 days and then coming down that's how the initial plan was uh later on it shifted a lot we came on to finally 6 days kangyatse too and then we'll see whether we want to do the next peak or not that's how everything shifted once we entered ladakh now uh maka valley as i said that uh, one of the most gorgeous uh, uh you can say the valley area 
which is barren lands full of mountains areas and you will find small patches of green field in the middle where the locals have grown their crops and stuff uh, the houses in ladakh are beautiful i love ladakh um, i can stay there forever that's how it was so i love the cold weather i love the hot weather uh, it was raining a bit in middle fine by me um, just because i was in the mountain i was at the high altitude i was feeling a lot more better so we started our first day on marka valley there was this she village that we were planning to achieve on the first day and um, we started slowly we started going on with the flow we were like let's take it one day at a time let's take it reach the campsite then we'll decide what to do the next day and that was the ideal approach that we had because of all the weights all the luggage we started through a first thing that we did was crossing the river as soon as the car stopped uh, the valley the river was almost flowing there so we had to cross the river first we decided to find the narrowest route Uh, where we can cross it or somewhere it's too spread in that we can easily cross it the flow is there but at the same time we can easily cross it mm-hmm. so we did that uh, we found a place where there was a bit of space the flow was still there but our legs can reach we hold our hands and then we crossed it uh, so the first day it started with the river crossing we started walking through the barren lands we started walking through the terrains the sun was on the top it was hot we had to remove our jackets we literally thought it won't be this hot but it was uh two years back it was definitely the hottest weather in ladakh and the climate change the way it's happening it's going to keep coming up uh so we started our journey we started going through the energy was fantastic everything was going well everyone is walking some out of four people one it was in the music i am the one who usually records things i love documenting my trek journeys how it went so i recorded it all and the slow and steady we started i was shooting everyone i took my friends gopro i was shooting everyone's videos photos and everything we were resting first day we reached to a place where there was a good uh, greenery and everything we reached there we set our tents we started eating our food the night time was so beautiful we were looking forward for more good night times because once you go in the mountains no pollution no people around no noise it's just birds and trees and winds making noises and when you step your two legs outside the tent in the middle of the night your legs are shivering your body is warm because you are half inside and you can see the stars you can see the shooting stars happening every 2 minutes it feels so good you don't want to sleep in the mountains we have this one rule if you sleep for 4 hours okay if you sleep for 5 hours very good if you sleep for 6 hours excellent and if you sleep more than 7 hours you are eligible to become a trek leader because it's not easy for everyone to sleep in the mountains in the tent with the cold winds outside with the noises and everything it's very difficult and uh, the first day i was mesmerized with the beauty around me how the climate was i literally didn't wanted to wake anyone up so i made the hot soup at i think 2 o'clock i made a hot soup for myself i was drinking and watching all these things i i would just say that that picture is still in my head my tent the grass the shooting stars happening the light coming from behind because there was this house um my hot soup was there with me my legs were shivering i didn't wear my shoes properly so uh, and i just wanted to just go for a walk but then i knew that if i go for a walk i wouldn't be sleeping at all so i was like let's just end the session here and i went back to sleep woke up in the morning at 7 o'clock uh our time was to wake up at 6 but the first day was a bit tiring so we decided to take a bit uh, one hour extra and then take it forward so we started by 7 we woke up we started our breakfast we made our breakfast two people were making breakfast one person was cleaning the utensils one person was packing out the whole tents and everything so we had a proper plan proper communication how things will go 
the guide was there. He was guiding us through the journey. <clears throat> the second day, he said that we have to cover 23 kilometers. We were like, okay, let's see how things goes. <laughs> and he also said that there is this one uh, particular place of serpents that we have to cross. He's in good contact with the serpents. So we are going to rest there for some time and then move forward. Uh, so the initial plan was covering 23 kilometers, going to the serpents place, having lunch, everything. So we started our day. The In the mountains, the more early you start, the better it is for you to cover the maximum distance. So we started our journey. Uh, lately, uh, at some point, we didn't know that there was this river crossing which was going to stop us. The bridge was broken down. So we had to do two river crossings on the second day, which took us a lot of time for ourselves, removing the shoes, making it on our backpacks, checking everything. We were trying to be as quick as possible. But the weights were killing us because most of the time we try to keep our weight on the waist. But then when you have so much of weights, it tends to come on your shoulders eventually. Uh, so that was happening with us. Uh, we kept on going. We kept on pushing each other. <laughs> Lately, uh, one of the person, he started having blisters in his legs. So it became quite slow. We three were quite persistent with our speed. So we three were together. Uh, he went a bit slow and he was walking at our own pace. In the mountains, you walk at our own pace. That is how we take it forward. But when you're doing something like this, and when one person is behind and three of them are ahead, it tends to create a misunderstanding. It tends to create and play with your head that this guy is very slow. This guy is this. We three are doing good. We should keep going. But at the same time, there's a sense of responsibility that comes that we have to wait for the guy. So we were waiting for him every one hour. We used to reach to a point where we knew there were diversions. And Marka Valley is a trek. You can just go around and come back. Don't go for Kangas or anything, but it's a beautiful trek. Journey of the Marka Valley. So we were enjoying, we were doing everything. We used to find these small, small rocks and we used to try to take a shed like this because the sun was on the top. So we are trying to get ourselves into shade because we are waiting for him. So and steady, we were doing his medical things as well. We were taping it up so that his blisters doesn't rub much. Um, finally, we reached the serpent's place. We were lacking two hours behind and the sun was almost coming on the set down. So the initial plan was doing 23 kilometers. But we did 18 and that's where we thought we will stop. Uh, we will rest because this is the farthest we can go because the other person was very far from us. It was around 45 minutes in difference. So we didn't want it to lose him at all. Uh, we waited there. Uh, he came. We pitched the tents. We started cooking our food and everything till the time he arrived. He got freshened up, got us some water from the local house, got it from the rivers and well cooked the food. Then everyone was quite in a good mood because the cool wind started, everyone relaxed. Once that happens, it becomes quite nice. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> the second day, the target we didn't achieve. We knew that next day we had to push ourselves longer because the third day we were planning to reach the base camp no matter what. No matter what. Uh, so that we can complete the journey and we can come back in the permanent time. Um, the second day was much more beautiful than the first day. Of course, we were on the higher altitude. We were on a good surrounding. No one was camping there. It was just us two tents and uh, everything was going pretty well. We were commenting. We were having fun. Um, we literally uh, jumped in the river uh, so that uh, uh, we just get freshened up. The cold water killed us, but we were just getting our towels, getting fresh up, talking to each other. One of the friends, he's very uh, deep talker. He goes very philosophical about everything in his life. And uh, <clears throat> too positive. Uh, I've told him as well, and I will tell you to you as well. Sometimes too positive is too bad okay yeah. like too positive is too bad i'll come to i'll come to you on that particular topic why i told you this um but he is very philosophical so his talks goes on that level i at some point i am philosophical but i have a limit because as soon as you reach that limit i go sarcastic 
I try to make jokes and I end that topic because I don't want to go much more deeper. Not necessary. So that's how I was. We were having these conversations and everything. And he was talking about what life is and uh, how things are, how astronomical things go and everything. And uh, I was I was really enjoying it. We saw, again, the shooting stars and everything was going pretty well. The mountains, it's a very simple life. You come, you walk, you do some work, sleep. That's how the whole life is. But it gives you a sense of perspective that what you did the whole day, how you did the whole day, and what were the negative thoughts you had in your mind, mm. what you don't want the next day that might impact. Mm. All these things requires good amount of time. Now, if you don't give that much of time, it might create a problem for the next day. And that's what happened on the next day. We started the trek five kilometers. We were already left behind. We started the trek. Um, now the thing was, uh, we literally thought at few points, we will get water. Now water becomes very important for cooking, for drinking, everything in the mountains. So we thought at this point, once we reach, we will get sufficient amount of water for now, fill whatever you have. Once we reach there, we will get water. So don't worry about it. That's what the guide told us about. Now, <clears throat> he thought about it because he has experienced that before the water was there. No one knew exactly that was there or not. So we were like, okay, let's go for it. We saw our maps. It was showing the lake. It was showing the river stream. It was showing everything coming from the mountains. We were like, okay, the water, we are going to find it there. Let's go. We started walking. Now, since the starting point, his blisters were really bad, really bad. Now, at this point, um, being a trek leader, I usually don't suggest someone to prick it and poke it up because that might become very difficult. So we apply preventions. Mm. Now, in preventions also, there was the problem that he was facing that is he's rubbing too much. So the blisters hurts you a lot. And I respect that guy because with this struggle and pain, he was continuing with it. He didn't want it to back down. He was very into about it. We all pushed him up. We all were like, let's walk with him today. Let's not go ahead of ourselves. But lately, when you have your own pace, you want to walk on that. Otherwise, you feel tired and exhausted. So somewhat we started with that particular area really felt bad for that guy because uh, most of the tricks that we have done together, every time he has faced this problem, every time. And uh, in when you face some problems like this on such expeditions, um, first you tend to be like, okay, he'll take some preventions, he'll manage it, everything. But then later on, you are like, why he is not taking the the mountains play with you they play with your mind it it literally tests how strong you are mentally physically yes because you are walking mentally because the nature wants to know how strong your mind is for others for the nature for your goals everything so we started walking now this guy was very much determined. He was mentally so strong. I would say he was stronger than me, all of us. <clears throat> That's how strong he was. That even though he was facing so many difficulties, he wanted to do it. Now me, being a very normal guy, I'm like, I want to do it. But if you are facing a problem, I don't think so I'll be allowing you to do it. Because I don't want you to get hurt, injured, or face any problems. So... The next day, we started around the third day, uh, the base camp day. We started around by 7.30, uh, early as possible. Wrap our time, started walking. Now, I was feeling a bit, uh, what you can say, a tired and exhausted because the last two days, um, at some point, unconsciously, I was trying to keep up my pace with the guy. Um so I was a bit more exhausted and tired. So I was taking a lot of halts. Um, I started to drain out. I wanted to drink more water. Whatever water I had, I used it. I was drinking. I was eating the bars. I was trying to keep myself energetic. After a point, it was normal. I think I just thought that it was just the morning sleepiness that I was feeling. Uh, tired and exhausted. Once it was in the mood, I was keep going. <laughs> now, we reached to a point where we planned of doing the camp now that took us around one and a half hour to reach to that point the next 
point where we planned of getting water the place name was karu lake now karu lake is known for its fresh water and a temple in the middle small temple and then small houses there and uh, that's how the whole karu lake is and from that point till karu village was approx 3 3 and a half hours so we decided that let's just keep going on we'll reach the karu village have our lunch there set up the food and everything and then we'll see if we want to push it to the base camp or not that's how the whole plan was we started walking we started walking we kept on walking i was listening to my music i wanted some quiet time i was listening to my music the sun was on the top the views became much more better the sun stopped hitting us because the wind was so good you were going on a high altitude we were we had to cross the mountain to reach the karu lake so we are walking through the waterfalls through the lakes and stuff in order to reach to the mountain areas we reached to a certain point where we no one had water now since morning we have we whatever water we had we had already consumed it everyone was just in the motion or using their power to reach the karu lake so that they get water we reached karu village around 12:30 in the afternoon <clears throat> as soon as we reach on the top of that mountain and the karu lake we can see down the karu lake had all the dirty and impure water it didn't had fresh water at all we were annoyed i was personally very annoyed i left my backpack i dropped down i was just lying on the mountain i'm like now what to do let everyone come let's decide let's see what the plan is um the sun was on our top of us the now the wind have stopped the sun is on top of us it's hot it's killing us no water with us we cannot cook our food we cannot get it we came to a plan where we usually do the water purification with the dirty water so you need certain normal basic things that you get in in the mountains you can use your cloth and everything and you can purify it we started doing with the water but um uh, to our uh, thing it takes some time the water purification takes some time good amount of time we did the first purification we did the second we did the third we did the fourth we did the fifth the water didn't purify at all we thought that there is some problems that we are facing through the water uh, but we were in a very hasty mode because everyone was very thirsty we all were in a hasty mode later on we gave up hope that let's not uh let's try to push ourselves instead of wasting our energy here let's try to push ourselves and go towards the base camp because base camp will have water and from karu village till the base camp it's around again next 4 4 and half hours to reach the base camp mm-hmm. now we have wasted around 2 hours there um uh, trying to figure out how to get dirty water and everything there's a small hut where some foreigners were sleeping Uh, they also faced the same problem of water but they were going nimaling they didn't thought of going to the base camp they thought of going nimaling where they'll find the water we didn't had much time so we have to push ourselves so usually at this point there is a group voting that happens what you guys want to do you want to rest here for now you want to push yourself forward or you want to keep trying what kind of decision so it becomes as a group thing because you all have doing it by yourself it's a group thing uh we discussed a lot on that that uh, what to do everyone had their different opinions but three of us had the same opinion of going forward now at this point it was majority that we all wanted to go base camp because we knew base camp will have water definitely uh there was one opinion that was against us that he didn't want it to and uh, he wanted to rest there and in the evening he will walk and come there we didn't feel comfortable about it because coming in the evening in an unknown location by yourself till the base camp <clears throat> it's a very risky task very risky task so we can we try to convince him that come with us let's go together we'll push ourselves together we'll keep going on this and that he was like no i'm staying here you guys can go forward and <clears throat> i'll catch up with you in the evening once the sun is a bit down i'll try to walk at that point i'm like at this point the mind doesn't work the mind stopped working mind and i picked up my bag i started walking 
I think this was something I was being tested. I thought and I failed. Leaving a member behind is not something that you do it. But then the situation was like that, that we all wanted water. <clears throat> we thought that on the way we might find it. So we three started walking forward. Uh, at some point, the two of them, they started walking a bit faster. I didn't have that much of energy in me because I wanted water uh, badly. These two started walking ahead. I was walking behind. One person was behind in, at Karu Lake. He didn't join us at all. Um, after a point, these two people disappeared in, from my eyesight. They were really fast. They crossed the mountain. They reached on that side. And I couldn't see them. Now, at this point, I was completely alone. Exhausted, tired, didn't know what to do. I knew the route. I knew everything what it was, but I wanted water. That was prior thing. The sun was killing behind. My friend was not there with me. The two of them went ahead. I removed my backpack, kept it there. Done. I was like, if someone comes to my rescue, they rescue me. I'm not moving from here. Oh I want water. That's how the situation was. Um, I felt that I was hallucinating. I felt that I was... I was like, now I'm not going to be able to get up anything. I didn't have any energy left in me. Kind of a feeling because it was around six to seven hours. Six hours, I didn't have water. <clears throat> so I was feeling that it was around 3.34 by this point that I was at that. Uh, from there, it was showing me more two, two and a half hours to reach the base camp. No energy. At this point, your mind doesn't work. You go on your instincts. There was this small river flowing, dirty water again, which was going to the Karu. I took that water in my water bottle, started drinking. I was like, now I feel good. Within a few seconds, my stomach started hurting because it was dirty water. It got a lot of bacteria and everything. My stomach started hurting, but I felt good because some liquid went inside. I was like, now I'm done. My stomach is not supporting me. My body is not supporting me. I feel nice, but my body doesn't have strength. This water didn't give me strength. This water gave me more bacteria. What I'm going to do? All this negative thoughts started flowing. And uh, I recorded a small video at that point. <clears throat> I picked up my backpack. I was like, let's do it. Let's go beyond the mountains. Beyond the mountain, there is the base camp. I was trying to make small, small efforts for myself. I picked up my backpack, started walking. Every five steps, exhausted. Every five steps, exhausted. Couldn't walk, couldn't walk. This was the only thoughts going in my mind. Somehow went on the top of the mountain. Now, this point, I lost my hope. I reach on top of the mountain. I see two mountains, one on the right, one on the left. There's a valley going in between. There are Himalayan bulls, which are on the top. Yaks, I would say, Himalayan yaks, which are on the top. Mm -hmm. One is so big, it literally looked like big as an elephant. That's how that yak was. And it was around 300 meters away from me as soon as I reach on the top. So I removed my backpack sat it on the rock, waited either for him to go on that side so that I can walk from this side mm -hmm. or else wait and go from the other side and then cross the river. It didn't move. I didn't move. Half an hour, we spent it like that. Eye contact, that's how it was. I didn't know what to do. I just thought that literally if I move forward and if he felt threatened, he might just kill me or he might just injure me. So I didn't want it to push. I didn't have energy to even defend myself. <laughs> I was like, okay, <clears throat> let me just try to find people who are there. There was no one. Let me try to find my people who are there. I couldn't see no one. I started shouting loudly the names. I was like, are any is anyone there? Nikhil, Rahul, Swapnil, anyone around? No one was around. It was just me, that big yak, few yaks on the left, mountains, valley, that's it. I was very terrified. Uh, somehow I was like, okay, now this he's not moving. I cannot stay here forever. Because the tent is with, one tent is with Sopnil. One tent is with the, uh, what you can say, the person who are ahead. I didn't have tent. So I had to either reach to Sopnil or go ahead. Now I didn't want it to go behind. 
So I started walking ahead. That yeah came closer. I started going on the left. The route said go through the right so that you don't have to cross the river. The yak didn't let me go through the right. I had to go through the left. I went on the opposite side of the river. I started walking there. Group of yak around me. I passed through the middle. I passed through the mountains so that they don't feel threatened or I feel safe about myself. I went through the mountain, did an extra mile about it. Went ahead, saw my two friends who were on the opposite side. Uh, the river flow was so high that I couldn't listen to their words, but I could see them. So at some point I knew I had to cross it on the other side, but the river is still dirty. I cannot drink the water. I didn't find water. I thought the same for them as well. That's why they are rushing so much. Started walking on the opposite side, kept them parallel. They were walking. I was walking. At some point, I knew that I have to cross the river. I didn't find a proper place to cross the river. Mm -hmm. So I kept walking. I saw them cross the mountain and disappeared. And I was like, now I have to cross it because I cannot see them. Did they go on that side of the mountain or are they going to come on this side? I had no clue. I was terrified. I was like, shit, what is going on? And uh, I, I kept walking, I kept walking, I kept walking. I didn't want it to cross river because it was the highest flow. Now in the mountains, you cross the river at the lowest tide. It is in the morning. It was already evening that the flow was way too high. So if I tried to go slowly also, the river might have, because I didn't have energy in my body, I couldn't because I couldn't eat any chocolates also because you need water after that. I didn't have anything. I was like, I don't want to cross from here. I'll see whenever the time comes. Kept walking, kept walking. Till this point also, we had no clue where the Sopnil was. He was far behind. He was still there. Maybe. We don't know. Started walking. Again, I saw them pitching the tent. Now I knew exactly where they are. They have pitched the tents. All now I have to do is cross the river. Mm. Now I was trying to find the lowest point or the widest point where I can cross. Now, there was this two small places in the middle of the river, which was formed. So I thought that is the very lowest point that I can cross it before it becomes the water takes over. I started removing my shoes, kept it on the back, took the trek pole, started crossing, reached to the first, reached to the second. Now, from second to the last that much, it was very deep. My whole trek pole was going inside. That means it was very deep one. Now I'm stuck in the middle of the valley. Like the river is flowing. I'm stuck in the middle of one of the small. The water has started to take over from that as well. So I'm standing. The water is coming. It was freaking cold water. Ladakh, you are at 5,200 feet. Crazy cold. Somehow, something, track pole, track pole, track pole. The water was pushing me down. If the water had pushed me down, I would have flown back from where I came, Karu Lake, directly. With all the rocks and everything in the middle, gone. Keep going, going, going. Managed to cross it. Reeds there, they were standing on the opposite side. They came. They took my backpack and everything, kept it inside. Warm myself a bit. Now, still the day is not over. We are there around 5.30, 6-ish. 6, 6.30, approximately. Now, the day is still not over because we haven't found water yet for our food as well. Oh, shit. To take the water, you have to go one and a half kilometer ahead from where we have pitched the tents. There you will find water. You have to get it from there, back to the campsite, and then drink, cook, whatever you want to do. Now, the task was who will go? Everyone is exhausted. No one had water from us three. We tried, we were like, okay, two people go for the water. One people pitch the tent, get it, everything ready, sleeping bags, everything. Just in case the other guy doesn't come up, we three have to sleep together, make sure everything is settled up. One guy started doing that, me and one of my friends, we started walking, took every bottle with us. I had approx seven bottles, he had approx seven, eight bottles, liters wise, seven liters mine, seven years, went ahead. Reach the water spot. Now the water spot, it was just dripping the water. Not much water. So we had to 
literally take around 15 20 minutes in order to get all the bottles filled got our bottles filled drink some water felt good about myself that finally i got some good water went back again carrying all the weights went back again started our cooking drink water the hoods have dried up the skin is drying up the hands have no energy just want to lie down all these thoughts are going and in the middle of all this thought there is one thought where is our fourth guy now we all are in our conscious now we all are come back in our resting mode we are trying to find a normal zone and now we are like why did we left him alone why he is on the why he is still not here how are we going to find him still we don't have any any energy to walk back we are like he'll come he'll come he'll come it the sun sets it became night no one arrived he didn't arrive he is alone we decided that let's take our torches we have regained some energy let's go back let's see where he is we started going half a back came back again we didn't find it we were like i have we have no clue where exactly this guy is at 8:30 we saw a flashlight coming slow and steady again the same route that i followed he is following the same route he's on the opposite side of the river flashing off flashing off flashing off so we started sending him a signal with our flashes he is tired exhausted also we were like let's help him out let's go on the opposite side of the river let's help him out we went to the middle of the river but then the opposite side it was difficult for us to go there so he had to do it by himself he started coming on this side he gave us a signal he started coming on this side came to the tent we removed his bag removed the tent pitched it up for him kept everything ready got the water again at 8:30 we went back got the water got everything we were trying to relax we were trying to become normal now this guy was like why did you guys leave me alone and oh. we were like we discussed we had a plan you were not supposed to come he's like yeah but you should not leave me alone i'm like okay fine relax for now we'll talk about it later then we asked him did you drink any water because he is the person who is who didn't drink water for the maximum time like do drink water and he's like yeah i found the water on the way itself and i'm like where the rock that i literally exhausted myself completely and didn't wanted to wake up and where i filled the dirty water just 200 meters ahead of that there was this rock and there was this bottle and the fresh water was flowing through that i had no clue and he found the water exactly there because he found my bini cap which i left there so he was like where your bini cap was exactly 200 meters there was this fresh water and he found the water he cooked something for himself behind he got his energy and then he came so we felt good about it but at the same time we were like ouch we should have got the water we didn't see we were so much into reaching the base camp we couldn't see around that day was one of the worst days in the mountains that i felt where it was mentally and physically so exhausting so tiring i had no clue what to do how things will go but still the journey is still not yet there we are still at the base camp we had to go at the top at the point i stopped enjoying myself in the mountains i was in pain i was suffering and i don't know what to do about it and at this point i told you my very and true friend very uh, too uh, positive friend he said this line and which made me more frustrated um mm-hmm. uh, it's a very good line if you use it well but the point where he used it i literally snapped on him that's how i was so the line was there is um there is a happiness in suffering or there is a peace in suffering also in pain he used something like this and i snapped him up i'm like there is no excitement there is no goodness coming from this pain or suffering because my stomach is paining my head is paining my oxygen level was around 56 oh shit my health was not good uh we were trying we were checking each other's oxygen and everything my was the deteriorating one uh we all felt like that i was facing through ams but the moderate one and i need to descend down 
but we were like we are taking an acclimatization halt let's take it normally if i was a trek leader i would have sent that person down immediately i wouldn't have thought when it came on me i was a trekker i didn't want it to go down because i came here to summit and that's where it hit me when things have happened uh, how the health becomes priority because i wouldn't have let that guy who was my trekker i wouldn't have let him do the acclimatization acclimatize day as well because that might deteriorate or improve no one knows but if it deteriorates it becomes worse the next day acclimatization day i was relaxing in the tent coming outside getting freshen up doing normal stuff everything not walking much try to went up vomited came down back this all people went for acclimatization walk came down check my oxygen meter again in the evening it was 49 now it deteriorated again at night i checked it it was again 54 it became quite normal again after two hours i checked it, it was 61 getting better but not good at all so i was like okay my my first thing for myself was i am not submitting i am staying here you guys can submit i might start going down mm. now in that there was one more person who was not feeling good about it he also felt some problem with his health and all he was like i also don't want to because i am not enjoying now cool now there are two people who can do it still the one with the blisters and the one who is the guide they both can do it so we both told them that you guys can try to go for the summit come back and then we'll go down slowly we both are going to take care of each other now the guy didn't wanted to go leave two of us who are not feeling well so he decided we are not going now the third, fourth person his only aim was to climb and he didn't want it to go without the summit he was fixated on going at the top even though we told him now at this point if we send him alone and if something happens to him the name comes on the permit guy mm. that he is responsible for everything now he didn't want it to do all of this thing because it might create a lot of problem so we made a video of that guy saying that if something happens to him no one is responsible he is saying all these things before he leaves now we were not feeling good about ourselves doing all these things but as a safety protocol if the other guy doesn't listen and he is too much into it we cannot do anything what if at night he just starts walking we don't know about it mm-hmm. so we made a video even though we are not feeling good about it we made a video he is saying all these things that he is going up no one is responsible if something happens to him he is responsible for his whole own health and he made this decision by himself so that is how the whole video was made and then he started walking we were terrified all three of us what is going to happen now no clue where he is what he is doing he is went alone following the other group went up don't know whether he is coming back where he reached we have no clue we were all awake at some point i felt like sleeping because i was not feeling well at 4 4:30 we got a knock at our tents and he was sleeping in my tent so he started knocking he opened the tent he came inside went to sleep i have no clue when he did all this thing next in the morning i see him next in my tent i'm like what happened he told me everything that how the other organization guides were not taking him with him he was felt alone he was facing this mental challenges within himself and then the way he was walking alone he didn't feel like walking so he came down from the crampon point when i went for the acclimatization walk i had a video i still have it i have seen it couple of times again and again just to remind myself what happened and that video i made it just purely because how i felt it at exactly that point that is one of the raw videos never posted i never even put stories about kangya chitu or ladakh in my entire instagrams kind of a thing mm-hmm. uh, because i didn't feel like i can do this or i can be like that because there were so many decisions so many things which i made and i still don't know whether i made a right decision or not but something that i made which i felt that this was important to myself no one did the summit 
all disappointed. We all reached the cramp on point, but we came down. Uh, then we started walking back. My health started becoming a much more better. I was running now. And everyone was like, what happened? I'm like, now I feel better. It's good now. It's very nice. This was the first time I put my bag on the mule. The mule took my bag down. That's why I was feeling much more better. He took my bag down. And this is the first and the last time I've ever used mule to carry my backpack. I've never done this. Um, we reached down. That disappointment, that thing was always there uh, in my mind about not submitting Kang Yatse. But then I had this sense of achievement that I made a good decision for myself about keeping me safe because that was important because Kang Yatse is not going anywhere. I can go back again. Um, but I really felt bad for the person who really wanted to do it, but no one else could actually help him out or push him to go forward because I was done. The other person was done. The guide wanted to stay back for us. So felt really bad till date. This guy really taunts me up about how he couldn't do Kang Yatse 2 because of me. And uh, I still feel really bad. Some We still go on the treks together. We still do the treks. But this taunt always comes and I always tell him the decision that I made was for myself. Um, now, why did I particularly share this thing? Because um, not always you can submit what you have planned. Even though you think that you have done a lot of fitness, you have planned everything, something might go wrong or something might go haywire. At that point, the way you react, the way you are in your senses, mentally, physically, with your team, the journey, that is much more important than reaching at the top. If you are going to jeopardize or you're going to keep your... Um, health at stake just to submit there is no point because you are not going to enjoy the summit you are just going to suffer at the summit as well and uh, take that decision for yourself I still remember the whole point of doing Kang Yatse was to push myself outside not for the summit was to push myself through a difficult journey which I have not done after my recovery, I have never got recovered. The ligament was still paining. It got really bad after Kang Yatse too. My ligament really got bad, the injury. <clears throat> but uh, this is something which um, I'm always going to remember how the journey was. In life, that I've learned two things. Either you're going to remember the worst part of your life or you're going to remember the excellent part of your life People forget about the middle times because I just had this incident. I literally forgot how beautifully I enjoyed the whole journey. Yes. But just because of this particular thing, I lost that thing that I, I literally enjoyed. I, I couldn't do my reflection. I couldn't do a debrief with myself because I was so scared that I made a plan. I didn't achieve. Now, what will people think? I couldn't do a summit. Being a trek leader, if I didn't do a summit, what am I? Just like a normal corporate world thing, there's a pressure, there's a pressure, there's a pressure. And you are just tangled in that pressure. And I was tangled in that too. I couldn't express this, how things went. Um, but this is always going to be close to my heart that... I want to go back again, Kang Yatse 2, to face my fears because I'm still scared of going back. I want to, I'm still scared of going in the mountains because I don't know what will happen if my health is not good. And if something like this happens, will I be able to cope up with that or not? And I want to remove that fear. But uh, taking that one step is very important. And I think this trip that I have right now in Uttarakhand is one of the trips that I'm doing it after that Ladakh trip. After that Ladakh trip, I never came back to the Himalayas. And this is again something I'm doing. I'm taking that first step now uh, to get out of that comfort zone that I've built it over the last two, three years that 
it's okay mountains are still there i'll go whenever i want but no i could have i chose not to and now i really want to so this is currently the backpacking trip that i'm going through this is basically for my first step again in the mountain starting from the scratch to face my own fears and get out of it uh, so i think that is how the kang yatse 2 is for me and uh, always will be in my mind as my worst trek but uh, the learnings that i had was immense and uh, i would like to keep it with myself so yeah that is how the kang yatse 2 is you mentioned earlier that you cannot point out what you learned when someone asks you from a trek but this story i think it's absolutely clear that what it has taught you and what difference it has brought in your life and i yeah. i'm sure you will now that you are going back to himalayas they will the himalayas will welcome you and they will be more kind to you this time just nervous this nervousness is too much with the himalayas it has shown me is very amazing side it has showed me is worst side and now i don't know which side is going to show me at this point but i'm trying to be uh, you know there is this very famous quote uh, that you are just like a tiny ant in front of this big mountain that is the feeling that i got from kang yat so before that i was like i can summit i can reach on the top and everything is just going to be like an ant in kang yat say i was the ant mm-hmm. cannot reach at the top but for other people i was the that small ant um that they were looking at it and they were like he is going to do it when this ant gets the power he is going to do it and he is going to come up but at this point this ant is not going to be allowed by the mountains because it's not his time it's not his place to be here and he needs to learn something different first in order to come back with a higher mental strength physical strength spiritual strength in order to reach again on the top so it's always good to come back to the basics instead of just keep pushing 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 and getting on the higher post it's always good to come back on your basics get it freshen up get it back go back again again come back because the basics are the one which are going to make you reach on the top and not pushing yourself the basics are very important and people keep forgetting so this was one of the reminder remember your basics slowly put the bricks on the top bring the basics again put the bricks on the top bring the basics again and that is how your house is made and that is how you keep doing it i think the decisions regarding <laughs> your health understanding that and knowing your limits is also very much important because as you said the mountains are there but if they are there for you if you are well enough to go back yeah. and Yeah. that is true uh i think this is the first time i have uh, come out and talked about kang yatse to it's just a very overwhelming experience that i had there so mm-hmm. it's very hard a trek leader again a super human in the mountain but a human mm-hmm. and he gets exhausted he needs its time he needs its space he has left his family and friends just for the people that's how a trek leader is the it looks very happening um this is something that i've always questioned myself in my career and i still do sometimes that <clears throat> what is more important if i select the simple things it involves my family and friends because they are the simple things in my life that keeps my life simple but i want to make better lifestyle for the people now this is something where i struggle a lot what is more important if i select a medium becoming a medium i have to leave back my friends and family i hardly meet them once month 
or six months sometimes six months i didn't even meet them or a year i didn't even meet them so it's very hard for them trek leader to survive in the mountains without friends and family so whatever people comes in their particular vicinity area they try to create that bond but after a point they know that it's just for four days it's just for six days and it becomes very exhausting because every time there are new people there are new challenges there are new opportunities they connect with people some people they don't connect they are human they will connect they will not connect but uh, it's very hard for them and uh, giving them a space of working in such a beautiful environment comes with a cost and uh, this people who keeps coming they always try to find a bond with them the people who are in the campsite as well the trek leaders around us um it it's just something that i've observed earlier when i used to work people used to love working in outdoors people used to have that bond um nowadays uh, what i've observed <clears throat> in outdoors also they are bringing the competition mm-hmm. which is not supposed to be there it is the purest form and if you bring competitions here within the people you're working it it's it's just an another corporate world you're working in but this time you are just ruining the experience of mountain <laughs> so all these things a trek leader has to fight an outdoor instructor has to fight and then uh, on top of that giving a better experience is something i had sort of for them who keeps doing this uh, it's been a long time i worked as a trek leader uh, so i remember that feeling of being a trek leader i remember how it feels what all things i felt and sometimes it scares me to again go back as a trek leader because i know that these things are going to come back but then i'm like i love it i want to be there and i'm going to be there i'll face anything that comes nature is with me it's going to help me go through all these things again and i'm going to face it and that is how every trek leader after their break comes back and goes back on it and that's something crazy there is one of my friend who has been working as a trek leader from past 4 years mm-hmm. he hasn't left the job he's still there uh, he got a promotion as a slope manager hats off to him i told him couple of times come let's work together he's like no i'm very happy here and definitely he is and i would say when i met him he was like a child mm-hmm. didn't care about the world nothing nada go on a trek enjoy come back give them experience that's how he was when i see him now he has grown so much in his life he's still the same child mm. but he has grown so much just being there just being present mm. and that's what i always look forward uh, in every outdoor leader that you have to know your roots you are still a child everyone is still a child bring that child out and that child will guide you through everything that's how it is so <clears throat> i think it's a you can write that on a t-shirt bring that child out <laughs> <laughs> yeah i should start my merchandising what do you say we can do it together definitely <laughs> if this if this podcast thing works out well <laughs> we'll start <laughs> merchandise all this... hopes high always on the high hopes yeah that brings us to the end of another chapter from the himalayan diaries You are listening to Tirth. You can follow Tirth on Instagram. His profile is full of stories and pictures from mountains around the world. Thanks for joining us on Himalayan Diaries from Unboxing Stories. I'm your host Ojas. Together with Shiva Masurkar, we are the creators of Unboxing Stories. Remember, every step in the mountains tells a story and we are here to bring them to you. If you are inspired to start your own trekking adventure please remember that these are not just leisure activities but true adventure sports it's crucial to learn prepare and take all necessary safety measures before embarking on your journey 
your safety is as important as your adventure if you have enjoyed this episode do share it with your friends and family please make sure to follow us and leave a review on spotify apple podcast or wherever you get your podcast tune in next time as we continue to unbox more stories from the himalayan diaries until then keep moving forward